Hey guys, before we get started on the vlog, I really want to talk to you about NordVPN. Now you guys know that I use NordVPN because I value my internet privacy and everybody should. I don't like the government spying on me. I don't like big tech spying on me. I don't like my internet provider spying on me and everything I do online. Not because I'm doing anything crazy, just because I like don't want to be tracked. I think a lot of people, if you realize how much your privacy is being violated when you're online at every waking moment, you'd be very like, uh, I need a VPN. And that's exactly what you need. So you got to head over to nordvpn.com slash the dad challenge. Use the code the dad challenge to get this sweet deal. And if you buy a two year plan, it's going to be a huge discount and you're going to get a month free, which is absolutely awesome. You get something free and it's how you support my channel. I actually use NordVPN. It's not just something I talk about and you guys know that everybody can use this. It's very simple to use. It's a program that you put on your computer or your tablet or your smartphone up to six devices in one house. You ping your IP address from anywhere. There's so many locations you can pinpoint as your IP address. And what does it do? It's very simple. So your computer or your tablet or your phone has an IP address, which is its own address, right? So whenever you do something on that device, they're tracking you. What NordVPN does is it puts you somewhere else so you cannot be tracked. It's very simple to use and it is very effective and I think you should get it. It's so simple to use and they have so much protection. There's like, they don't, they don't log your data. They're so fast. They have like, they don't, they're encrypted. It's just super safe, super, super good. NordVPN.com slash the dad challenge. Use the code dad challenge. Get your deal today, support this channel. And look, I know for a fact that they are anti-raisin just like me and you. So we support that and we go for that. So head over there and let's get to the video. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh. Today we're here for episode three of the Fathering Autism ongoing series, I guess. I don't know. Today we're talking about uh, the, the kid, Isaiah, and the other kid, <laughs> uh, the the adopted sort of, I don't know, weird kid summer. Um, it's, it's, it's gonna be a video that's just kind of revealing to the circumference of Abby and how much Asa has let other people use her. We talked last video about how they take her around on these tours, um, or was that the one before that? And then we talked about crazy fans. Yeah, so that was last video. And that Asa has recently in his comments come out and said, few things like this is made up which is actually crazy to me because it's not made up and you can go look for the site yourself it's there so him saying that deflecting that is actually the scariest thing that has happened in this whole entire vlog asa knows that that shit exists and he instead of just coming out and saying we we get it we're on top of it we're looking into it he just says no this is fake and so that's really, really stupid, okay? Anyway, today's video is just gonna be a little different. It's not gonna be a hate fest or anything like that. It's actually gonna be, I think you're gonna be surprised. But before we get to that, we gotta throw the ball, right? I mean, that's what we do here at the DCP. Guys, if you're wondering how you get your name on the wheel of names, it's you just join either YouTube channel, you join either YouTube channel, the Dad Challenge channel, the Dad Challenge podcast, or you join my Patreon. Then I spin the wheel for you and uh, yeah stuff's happening we're getting new prizes coming up so if you're if this actually lands on your name you're gonna get a prize but if i get the ball in then you get a bigger prize so i want something for everybody because i think it's like yeah you get your name but i want you guys to win something and that's and i've got you've got aims to thank for that she's been helping me research what prizes to give out and stuff like that so we're good to go let's do some dancing baby <laughs> All right, Sonja Maddox. I think it's Sonja. The J is a Y. Oh, it's okay, Sonja. Reach out. We're going to send you something anyway, because that's how we roll here at the DCP. Let's get to the next one. I'm not sure if that was Patreons or YouTubers. Ames, do me a favor, okay? The little middle button there, little graphic. Can you make one that says YouTube and one that says Patreon, please? All right. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Samantha Nicole Maximow. Oh, that was close. Let's do it. T 
let me let me preface this video by saying today's video is really not a place to hate on anybody okay now i do snark i don't actually hate anybody i think i've said that before i don't hate anybody i do dislike people very much but i think every human has some redeemable qualities even micah stoffer i know surprise right but i still think that every human makes mistakes everybody does stupid shit all the time okay and so i never mean to hate somebody because i don't want anybody to really hate me I feel like that's it, but I do snark on people and I do believe that one way of getting justice for people is to call out BS that's happening specifically on YouTube, specifically people who exploit their children, which is Asa and Priscilla. And today is going to be an extension of that when it comes to Isaiah and Summer. Now, Summer a little less than Isaiah because Isaiah has been part of this family since he was birthed, right? Um, but I do believe that Isaiah also has been a child of exploitation. Obviously, he's been on the, the channel without his informed consent for a long time, but a lot of people overlook that. And Isaiah has also been, I think, groomed to be, not gro groomed is the wrong word, but because it's really hard to say that he's definitely been used for respite when needed, has been in the vlog since the beginning and has is literally a spitting image and a spitting re representation of his father and the way that he does everything and the way that he exploits YouTube algorithms to make money and all that stuff because he has his own vlog, right? We're going to get to Summer in a minute, but I want to stick to Isaiah just for a little bit. Now, Isaiah is now an adult, and so this is where this kind of gets a little bit different, right? So now Isaiah has a choice to make. I don't know everything about Isaiah. Like, I know that I know that all you guys over there at Title Life are going to be all like, oh, yeah, doesn't know. I just don't have time to know everything about every single family vlogger. I think I know enough to understand the situation, though. And I think I know enough, and we have enough videos here to kind of, like, dive into the reason that this is bad and dive into the reason that if Isaiah wants to pursue this as a career, that what he's done with his sister and what his parents have forced him to do with not force. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's not going to be good for his career. And I think the same is going to be said for summer. So Isaiah is what 18. Now he goes to university. I think the newest vlog, apparently they're buying him a house as an investment property for Abby. But here's the thing, Asa, and you're watching this. I know, Priscilla, you guys are watching this. Not everything has to be for Abby, because, yeah, you definitely do have a son, too. So you don't always have to use the guise of, like, this is all for Abby. You do have a son that might want some stuff, too. Just saying. Um, and so to me, that's kind of, like, sometimes often overlooked about Isaiah, because Isaiah is often, how do I say this nicely, is often lumped in just with Asa exactly the way it is. Okay, exactly the way he is, and they, they feel like Isaiah is now a mini Asa, and I, I tend to agree with that. Now, Isaiah has also been a huge factor in, I showed you guys that video last week about, or I showed you in the last video about how he's at the mall with his friends, and he's kind of forcing her to say goodbye and hug and kiss people and all this stuff, and it's just gross. But I don't believe that Isaiah would have been doing any of these things like this on cameras if it weren't for Asa and Priscilla. Just don't think it. I don't think it's going to happen, and I just... That's where, I, that's where I stand on that. So that's who Isaiah is. He's the brother of Abby and has done... Uh, I've seen a lot of stuff about how he treats his sister. Like when they were at the playground, he was forcing her to get in the playground equipment or like hug her and put her into places and like he'll like make fun of her and all this stuff. And I don't have a humongous issue with a lot of that considering a brother-sister dynamic is way different. Now, he has grown up with Abby, and, a lot, and, and you, everybody can sit there and judge when he, like, makes fun of them. I, I, I would never want to say it's okay to make fun of someone stimming, like they did in the, the video, right? But I want to make sure that you understand that a brother-sister dynamic is way different. I think that Isaiah is allowed to do the, some certain things, like bugger and teaser and all that stuff, to a degree, right? I mean, to a degree, it, it can be, like, lighthearted, and it can be... Um endearing to to a small degree if it's just a quick you know haha you know all kind of stuff but i think that a lot of people have problems because she can't really stand up for herself specifically as they get older it seems like when someone doesn't want something just don't do that now when my when i'm tickling my children one thing i've decided from the beginning the get-go is that if my kid says the word stop tickling me i stop tickling them and it's something i don't know it's something so small but it's something i think i allows your kid to understand that when you say no that thing should be happening, right? That's a huge part of consent. Consent is massive in this argument that I'm making. Consent is almost all of it, right? These, specifically, Abby cannot consent, nor will she likely ever be able to fully consent um, 
with the understanding of what she's being put out there. And that's, that's, that's the only argument I need. I don't need anything else. So everybody's coming in my comments, getting all mad at me about how she can consent. No, it's just, and the fact that father, the fact that Asa and Priscilla both have said that she can consent to me is mind blowing. And then said she can't, and then said she can, and they, they keep wavering back and forth. But I think they land right now. If you were to ask them to say, no, she cannot consent, but they say, but we are her parents. We are the ones that make the choices. And so this is the choice we're going to make for her. Like it or love it, like it or hate it. He's, he's right. Right. Now, what Ace is doing is not illegal. What he's doing is immoral. Okay. And it's not something a parent should ever do to their child. That's one thing I do. If, if I'm doing something with my kids, like tickling them or wrestling or we're doing something and they say, no, stop. That is when I like, boom, I stop. And then I try to say, look, the reason it's important for when you say to stop and I stop is because I want you to know that when you say something, that that should be the thing that is upheld. And I don't think even with that small inkling with our children, when it comes to like kissing people, hugging grandparents, if they don't want to, you shouldn't force them to, you should encourage them to, to be like, you know, it's grandma, they want to hug. You know, but if they don't absolutely don't want to, do never ever force your kid to do something. Teach your kids about consent and about their own bodily autonomy. At the same time, yes, you are still their parent, and there are there are lengths you can stop at. Like when it comes to different things, like you shouldn't they shouldn't be able to eat whatever they want. Their bed they shouldn't be able to make their own bedtimes. But I think when it comes to their bodily autonomy, like things that are happening to them, like touch and all that kind of stuff, I think there's a big thing when it comes to putting them on camera too. Obviously, that's a rant. I'm sorry. Okay, so that's Isaiah. I do believe that Isaiah is a victim here for the most part, but now Isaiah, and you're watching this, listen to me, brah, okay? You're a smart dude, you're in school, you got friends, you're, on, you're in the public eye. And if you wanna pursue this as a career, likely you need to probably start figuring out how to distance yourself from all of this because, or maybe not, maybe the, maybe the world of autism likes that you guys are doing this, I don't know. But now that you're an adult, you have a choice to make. Okay, you can distance yourself from the behavior that your parents have done and taught you how to do, right? D distance yourself from exploiting your little sister for views on YouTube and on Instagram. And I, I don't need to go prove it. There's other videos where it proves whenever Abby is in the picture for any of these people, X, boom, 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 boom. One of their care, one of their respite workers deleted everything because of what I'm talking about here. And I think, I, I think that's a win. I think they don't like the negative attention. And I'm not sure, I, I, you know, Summer's gonna be a little bit more of a different story here because Summer is a respite worker that is like they call her like family. She's gone so far to even say that Summer is like her favorite child over Abby, okay? And she's not her child, okay? Summer is, the, I think, if I'm digging into my first year, you know, psychology major university education, what I'm gonna dig out here is half-assed. This is a legend. But Priscilla wants Summer to be the daughter that she never really had. Now, I do believe that Priscilla, and if we're being real and we're being human here, every parent who likely struggles with a child who has severe IDD, um, severe autism and all that kind of stuff, has probably thought at one time or another what it would have been like if they didn't. Now, does that make them bad? No. Every parent in the world has likely once or twice thought about what the F have I done? What, what, why have I been dealt these days? Even if it's with kids that don't have disabilities, okay? Teenagers. <laughs> I'm sure every parent of every teenager at some point has been like, I'm gonna kill this kid. Or been like, I'm gonna leave. I'm never coming back. And are you wrong for thinking it? A little. But I, we all have. And so I want to just stand there for a second with you guys and be real. That what Priscilla and Asa have done is not right, okay? But at the same time, we have to implement, we have to put into the picture that yes, this is not the easiest situation for any family to go through. Okay, so I don't wanna excuse all of her behavior, but I do believe at some level, Priscilla has thought about that and I don't judge her for that is what I'm saying. But if she continues to do so and, and it becomes a pattern of it, then yeah, I'll judge you. And I think that sort of has become with Priscilla. Like she projects that. Projects it, uh, Priscilla's really hard, is not good at lying. Um, and she projects this. And so does Asa. Asa actually, I see, the, I see the opposite. Asa sees Abby as his cash cow and his daughter and everything else and um, puts her first because he understands the ramifications of what it looks like on a camera. Priscilla can't do it because she's just not talented at it. Now, I do do I believe they love Abby with all their heart? I absolutely do. Do I do I want to see Abby taken away from them? Absolutely not. Okay, it's the worst thing that could possibly happen in this situation. Asa and Priscilla aren't bad parents as in 
like I, I struggled with this for the last couple of weeks. That's why people are wondering why I'm doing, why am I taking so long? Why am I taking so long? This is why, because I actually mold this shit about. I'm not just making this video like Asus says to make money. I, do I make money? Absolutely. But I don't just like come out willy nilly. If I did that, I would do every freaking video that I would snark on every video they had. I would sit down and I would tear them apart. Okay. But I actually started thinking about this. They're not bad parents. They are actually, I do believe, saying this is the way we, we live a affluent lifestyle to give her the things. But do I think they're giving her the things? No, I don't think that either. I think that along the way, something happened where they're like, wow, I cannot believe how much money we're making. And like, we got to continue this whenever she's in the vlog. When money enters into the picture, okay, when exorbitant amounts of money start happening for literally the easiest job in the world, which is turning a camera on and then editing. Guys, it's easy. Don't ever let a family vlogger anywhere ever tell you, my job is so hard and I do this and it's so effing easy what they do. Okay, very simple. And, they don't, and they're not funny. They don't, their content is just basically what we do a day in a day. And like, it's really simple. And they make a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money doing it. And then the Priscilla obviously is the, to, to prop up the MLM. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting away from this whole topic, but I just, I... That's how my mind works, and I'm sorry, but let's get back into summer. Okay, so we're going to go into, today I'm going to shout out Meredith, or Mary Bowwinkle, as you can see her in the comments. She is my ride or die when it comes to fathering autism, okay? I do not know all the things I know without Meredith, okay? Meredith is someone who is very interested in this topic. She is actually quite central in her stance on this. She's not a hater like a lot of people call her. She's actually, her and I have had many, many, many conversations about this. She's passionate about seeing Abby not be exploited, just like I am. And so I wanna shout it to Meredith because when it comes to the notes that I'm about to deliver here, this is all Meredith and the people that are helping her. And so those people that are here to help and do this part, I wanna thank you so much. And I'm sorry if I don't get it all right all the time. And I know that you guys know a ton, but I do want to get together with you guys all that are part of this and actually have a Zoom conversation. And I'm going to set that up, get Mary, Meredith to set that up soon. I know it might be a shit show, but you guys are able to like, the way that I learn about people is watching, not reading. So if I can, that's why when I tear apart a vlog, generally my gut steers me in the right direction. And a lot of people say I hit the nail on the head more times than I don't. Okay. And so that's kind of how I rep. When I do, re when research like this comes up is very difficult. And so Meredith and people that are helping shout out. And so, and for the people who are keep commenting about where's the next FA vlog, where's an FA and they, you guys are getting upset with me, you need to chill. Okay. I'm not here. I don't serve as your hammer. I don't serve as your justice. I like that I can be part of that. And I'm glad that you guys are seeing that in me and that this is happening. I do get it, but you really need to chill because these are very serious topics and these are very important things that we're talking about. And yeah, I snark, but not here, not with the fathering autism thing. And we're going to dive into more autistic families that are doing the same type of thing very soon. But I want you to know that I'm doing as the best I can with the time I have given to me I still have to be a good dad, okay? What kind of effing a-hole would I be if I was shirking my responsibilities with my family because you guys want to see a vlog? Now, this isn't to say I'm mad at you or anything like that. I just need you guys to just give me some grace and be here with me because I am doing this and I'm just as passionate as you are. Well, maybe not a lot of you, but I am. I'm passionate about this. So I want you to just make sure if you get a chance to go thank these people that are helping, go ahead and thank them. Anyway, it's cheesy. But so... That's why I'm gonna read off the notes that Mary has given me here. And so we're gonna dive into summer right now based on her notes and she's given me videos with screenshots. It's like crazy who summer is, okay? So who is summer? So first, the first post that ever came up with summer is this one here. This one here is the summer, it doesn't say, it's May 12th, 2015. And if you see it here, I can show you. So summer is a camp counselor and has been in, in Abby's life since, wow she's 10 years old at these camps. And from what I gather, Abby's favorite thing to do are these camps. So going on vacations with her family, skiing and doing crazy stuff that doesn't make her comfortable. She doesn't like that. So Asa and Priscilla, I don't know if you've considered this, but since she's in school and she's, and she might be done school in a couple of years, you might want to consider like finding like all these camps across the US that allow her to go do the fun stuff instead of you using her for your own benefit, taking her to Dunkin' Donuts and like caves with weird, you know, skiing and things she doesn't like. Why don't you just cons like, just instead of one summer away, why don't you make this her life where she's always surrounded by people that are supporting her and loving her and doing the cool things that she wants to do. Just a suggestion, I could be wrong about that. But anyway, there's that one picture there. Um, then we got, we go into, this is summer. Okay, so summer Magliocchetti is respite. 
She has been in their family since Abby was 10 and considers herself Abby's best friend. Do I think that Abby loves Summer? I absolutely, from what I've seen, think that Abby loves Summer. Absolutely. Summer, again, I'm going to take this objectively, looks like a super nice girl. Doesn't seem stuck up. Doesn't seem like influence of culture is like her main important thing. I mean, it probably helps her. Um, I do believe that she's very good at her job. I believe that um, she likely is going to pursue this and be very successful at it as long as this doesn't hinder that. But I also believe that she does some inappropriate touching, that she she is part of the issue when it comes to exploitation of Abby and um, a lot of things. I do think that she's just become almost groomed like to be use her in her social media. And so, yeah, the good stuff is there, but the bad stuff severely for me outweighs the good. 100% because as soon as you start exploiting a child without their consent, nothing is redeemable past that. So here's another Instagram post. Ever since Saturday being Abigail's 13th birthday, I've had a lot of my mind. Saturday opened up my heart a little bit. I was able to see all the lives you've changed, including mine, Abigail. Throughout my whole life, I've known what I wanted to do and is work with children that have disabilities. But ever since I met you, I've known why. I've known why. You've changed my life. You have a super special spot in my heart. You have taught me so many things, how to love, care, and laugh a lot about the little things you've taught me about. I guess she just, she goes on about all this shit. They do TikToks together. Um, and so all that to say, she's just part of her life. Now, does she exploit her for use for views on YouTube and Instagram? Absolutely. She has like 60,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's huge. Okay. And Let's go to the TikTok. They have TikToks together. They do a ton of stuff. But here's where one of the videos came in. And this is Asa describing, um, I guess, Summer back in 2017. So it's talking about Abby's best friend. Uh, at her volleyball game, you know, at her school, she gave us a little tour. We got to see, meet her friends, you know, at, at, in her apartment. It was nice for Abigail to get to see her best friend. That was that was pretty awesome. So if you guys don't know who Summer is, Summer uh, is a friend. She's like a member of the family now. She's because we've just grown grown close with her. She's like, yeah, she's, but they pay her, I think, to be respite. And they, she lives in their garage or something like that. Um, a lot of people have commented that maybe they thought there was something inappropriate going on. I absolutely don't think that. I don't No, No, I don't think that. Ace is stupid enough to do something that stupid. Like he already, you know, I think Ace has kind of learned his lesson back in his past that if he messes up from this point forward, everything is in Priscilla's name and he's toast. She's also Abigail's best friend. We met Summer through Surfers for Autism. She was a volunteer when she was in high school and um, she loved our family and we loved her. So it just kind of grew from there. With I want to point out something. If you're a famous YouTuber, you get a little bit treated differently. Let's be real, right? So I'm not saying that Summer, I don't think that like them because of that. I do believe from all the things I've watched now about this family, and this is why I'm so passionate about this, is that Abigail is an effing giant ass sweetheart. Like, I again, remember I worked for over a year and a half with severely autistic IDD individuals where I had to do everything for them, dress them, bathe them, take them out, feed them, everything. And man, do you go close to them? It's really, 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 because because I can go home at the end of the day, right? So it's a little bit different. But one thing I think that draws a lot of people to this channel is Abigail, and it cannot be denied based on the numbers because she's very endearing. Abigail is endearing. She's a beautiful young little teenage girl who is innocent in so many people's eyes, right? And so when it's the special treatment for someone who deserves it, absolutely. But when you're a YouTuber as well, it has to be considered that you're going to even get more special attention. And she does. And they take her around and meet people like that. So do I think it's unpress Do I think it's unwarranted that she gets this kind of attention? I don't think that she would get this kind of attention otherwise, but I do absolutely believe that Abigail is a very endearing individual. Like to know her quirks and quarks and all the thing when people talk about her sass and her, she likes to be mischievous. I do think that there's something about it. She is very cute and she's very funny. So I do see the draw, but I still don't think there's that that's an excuse at all to use her for that. It's just basically they're using her as like the, she's the talent. It's so scary. And it's a, it's a two edged sword because if they took her down, this channel's done and everybody knows it. And they never will. They never will until forced to otherwise, until some scandal comes out or something happens dangerously. I don't know. I don't ever want something ever dangerous to happen or her be removed from her family. I just need her family to kind of see what the hell's going on. And they refuse.
we like to think of Summer as, as an adopted child now. She's kind of like a big sister to Abigail, definitely like her best friend. The reason why I use term the term best friend with Summer is Summer's probably the only person in Abigail's life that is not a caregiver for Abigail in some capacity. Okay, so just spoke to Meredith on the phone because I'm like, uh, what? He just said here that she was the only friend she had that wasn't her caretaker. Lo and behold, less than a year later, Summer moves in and becomes a caretaker. So what he's saying here is likely awesome because, yeah, that might have been the time, but then later moves in and gets paid and then uses the platform to make money and all that stuff. So uh, that kind of sucks because if that were the case, Abby finally had a friend in her life and then ended up turning into a caretaker for respite for them. She is simply just a friend. She just loves Abigail and treats Abigail like a young lady, like an equal. And that's important to us that she has that relationship with somebody. Everybody else in Abigail's life is telling Abigail what to do and, and, and filming her and showing her how to use the bathroom and, you know, exploiting her online. And yeah. And so is she, though. So was Summer. Making sure that, uh, you know, Abigail's therapies are reinforced and and we live life a certain way, whereas Summer just treats her like a friend. That's what And then became the help. That's why they have such such an amazing bond. But that wraps up this vlog. All right, that's enough of that. So, uh, you know, it was important for Meredith to, to point that out to me, to show me that at one point, yeah, they were friends and everything else. And then all of a sudden, they took this dynamic that was really important to Abigail, probably, and turned it into a working respite position, which sucks for Abby. Right. And so uh, Mary pointed out this next video to me that she cried when she left. So I think Summer's leaving for two weeks or something like that. And I want you to see how it affects Abigail because it's really important to watch. Even when she doesn't always work super great. Okay, I'm not leaving. Summer's leaving, unfortunately. Love you. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hey. Don't cry. You'll make her cry. Give her a kiss. So we'll see you in... July. See you in two weeks. Well, I thought this was going to be a sad moment or something. I think she cried when she left, meaning Summer cried, because Abby's like, okay, peace. I don't know what this means here. I don't know. It's only two weeks. Two weeks. Drive yeah. safe. I love it. Texas, when you get there, stop and get it. Don't get done. It's coffee. <laughs> okay, so yeah, finally. So she's freaking out because she actually is leaving now. So I think this plays into the whole idea that Summer was a friend and then became a respite worker, meaning that was her job. And so the reason I'm, I'm making this parallel is because Abigail probably needs friends in her life. And when everybody's exploiting her to a degree for money or for fame or for YouTube or Instagram, I just feel like that's such a lonely existence for her. And she must feel that. She's still a human being, everybody. She still has feelings. I feel like... And I could be completely wrong about this. I feel like Abigail knows and feels and thinks more than any of us, even her parents do. Like, I just feel like there's intrinsically, she's like, if you look at her in the eyes, a girl has intuition. There's something there. Sometimes you can talk to somebody and you're like, that person is not here. Like, some people are just spaced out, right? Your, your gut tells you that this person is likely, like, doesn't understand social cues. Abigail is there. Something about Abigail draws me to her to say that she is very cognitively aware about things. And that's why I do that, because I see when she's trying to turn the camera off. So I see when she's trying to get out of places and her emotions do play on her face. Like, look. It's okay. You'll see her soon. It's heartbreaking. And of course, of course, we can't miss the fact that they're filming this entire thing for views. For money and I guess can't help but feel sick about that I can't help but feel like disgusted that they're like okay we know that she's gonna freak so get that camera on and exploit the situation so not only is this her best friend leaving but they're gonna put this on the internet for everybody to watch for two almost 300 almost 300,000 views I mean, you guys can at me all day a so you guys can get mad at me from doing this for clout and videos and views and all that stuff all day long but what I'm doing here is calling out this Disgusting behavior because clearly you don't give a shit. Love you. I know it sucks. Bye, Summer. Love you. Love you, Summer. Drive safe. 
Tell Phil we said happy Father's Day. Okay. Best dad around. That's dis that is disgusting. Sorry. I get trying to set, show emotions, and I understand that. And this to me just... This to me just shows actually that Abigail is more there than we all think, than a lot of people think, right? They don't give her enough credit for she really is. It just makes me more mad because they exploit that. Asa knows she's going to freak when she leaves, so what does he do? He turns the camera on. I'm pissed about this. Now I'm going to cry. I mean, about me. What about you, Asa? What about you? Yeah, what about you? What about you? You gotta be kidding me right now, these people. Turn the camera off and let your family do something without the camera on their effing face. Take away the autism, take away everything else. In general, this is stupid. This does not allow anybody to ever have any semblance of a private moment in their life. Ever. She'll be back. They're crying because now they have to do a little extra work. Back in two weeks. No, oh, don't cry, babe. I know. Again, and I said this before. Look how sad she is that a person that is not in their family, who's not her child. And I, again, I don't want to say that you can't. I'm just saying. It is so evident to me as a father, okay, about who she loves the most in this family. And that is so scary. And that is so sad for Abby. We'll FaceTime with her. Ab say bye, friend. Yeah, get her out of there. Calm down. And of course, they're just going to film. I'm not going to go through it. I'm not going to put it out there if I can help it. She goes through, obviously, things, and they keep the camera on her for the next... Like, literally the entire vlog. 15 minutes right and I, this excuse that leg humpers come out with like they don't show you everything they don't show you 10 minutes of life literally showed you the moment she started freaking out okay and like for another 15 solid minutes so it's not like it's like something like it's only 10 minutes of something it's so small this is a very impactful moment in this girl's life and showing every moment of it you're not letting her have anything to herself she doesn't want to be on the camera she wants to go cry and sulk and she should be allowed to do that without you putting a damn camera in her effing face I know this is about summer, but like whatever. So okay, now we got to get into the um, this little video, and you guys are gonna be pissed. So trigger warning: this shit's crazy. Okay, it's crazy. I don't like this video. I've seen it too many times, and I, I get upset every time I see it. But I'll be scrubbing through. But so this is one of the main reasons that drew me to this channel, that got me so upset. You know I hate MLMs. I hate MLMs. Hate, hate, hate. Because they're predatory. They prey on people that are vulnerable. And they let, make a lot of people go broke and feel less about themselves because they never succeeded. Like a-holes like Priscilla succeeded. Let's be real. Priscilla succeeded because she already had a massive platform to exploit her fans. Not only did they exploit Abigail, they exploit their fans for Lipstick Mama, Slime Life bullshit, hair products or skincare products, makeup. And I've seen some of these Lime Life representatives. I can do my makeup better than them. And I don't even do makeup, okay? Like creepy makeup baby is way better. But this video is pissed. This video made me super upset. This is what really drew me in because they did this video for Lime Life, for her fans, because they want to see her. And the, the Summer's there laughing. And Summer, the reason we're focusing on this one is because Summer is the biggest, one of the biggest proponents for what's going on here. That smile she has on right there, Summer, you know this, and you're watching this. You know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you were to work with another family, like someone with Abigail, you would not be doing this. Okay? You would not be allowed to do this. This is unbelievable what's about to happen. So trigger warning, this is going to piss you off. My bad, my bad. Oh my gosh. Just edit it out. Oh no. <laughs> Let's not do that, Abby. You turned it off? Good job. Thank you. What is that, a vacuum? Okay, I'm, f I'm scrubbing. This is so boring already. This takes 10 minutes to put the camera on. So, let's get into it here. Hey. Hey, do you want to wash your face? Can we wash your mm -hmm. face? Yeah. Because Abby is a teenager, so we need to wash her face. 
and some are staring in the mirror. Like, let's be real. When Instagram fame, YouTube stuff starts happening for people, your attitude and your... Everything about you changes. I'm sorry. When you start... I, I, even for me, I started in June. I've got 60,000 subscribers. I get a ton of attention. I get a ton of emails. And I'll be real with you guys. I absolutely love it. Okay? I haven't been this happy in my entire life. The amount of friends I've made, the attention I get, nobody is immune from it. Okay? So let's be real. So Summer is definitely... Her, her, her star has elevated because of this. Let's, let's be real. She's a nobody without Abigail. None of these people are anybody without Abigail. And so using her in these positions, and, and, and shame on you, Priscilla, for using both of these girls in your shitty endeavors. And we're just going to use the Dream Clean. Like we Don't buy this shit. Dream Clean can suck it. More like Scream Clean or something. Use on ours. So I'm going to give her okay, a washcloth. So basically selling <laughs> products, we're going to go. Fun times. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, she cleaned her face. What what gets me the most about sometimes about these interactions that they have when they're trying to get Abby to do something is exactly what's happening when I'm trying to train my dog. And I'm not saying that Abigail's dog. I'm saying they treat her like a dog. They are training her and like when she does the thing they want finally, good girl! Amazing word! And then that like I, and again, maybe I don't know enough about IDD and autism to say that this is appropriate and I would never ever treat a human like this, okay? And again, I'm not saying I know everything, but I did, I get, there has to be something said, maybe I'm allowed to say, I'm saying it. I worked with these individuals for a year and a half full time and I never spoke to them like this. I always spoke to them like they were my equals and they were my equals. I always spoke to them like they were just my bro, my dude, a friend. Hey dude, what's going on, man? I always did that. It was never condescending in the tone that they are putting across here. Can I wipe your face? Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know. Here's the, here's the problem I have too. That <clears throat> I wish I knew more about her signs and everything else like they say. But I feel often when she doesn't want the thing, they project the yes onto her. Does that make sense? So no matter what she says, often the, the noises and the signs are different, but they always like, yes, can I do the thing? And then she responds and it likely could mean no or it could mean yes. But there's always yes to them, and they repeat that phrase. Yes, okay. I have a problem with that. Yeah, look. Yeah, my It doesn't seem like she wants it then, right? So you say yes. She says no by physically moving away from the thing. So to me, that's a no. <laughs> I want to say, though, I don't think that she's not having fun. I think that they feel like... I think Abigail is likes to be mischievous and she likes to fool around and have some fun and she feels like this is it so i'm not saying that what they're doing right now is necessarily ba like bad i feel like she thinks they're having fun and i i think that's cool they're all laughing everybody's having a good time nothing wrong with that oh, nice. <laughs> Let me see. that's so nice <laughs> but when she puts her hand around her neck to wipe her face i have a problem summer now summer is someone who served at this camp i know she was a volunteer i'm not sure if she's paid at some point this is a paid respite worker though okay if I ever, ever did that to one of my clients at the, at the home I worked for, I would have been fired instantly. It would have been no two week notice. It would have been like, bye, we might even call the police. When you put your arm around someone's neck to wipe their face with that look that she has on right now, I have a problem. And I could be wrong. But that just means she doesn't want it. So don't, do, they're forcing this girl right now to apply products, to clean her face, to do something for an MLM. And this is what pisses me off. And that Summer is an adult here. Okay? She's not a teenager. She's an adult. And so this is the summer 2018. So this is the summer that's this is the summer that Summer moved in and became respite for for Abby. Probably paid position. Likely not a lot, but a paid position nonetheless. And she's 20 years old at this point. So Summer has no excuse. Summer is an adult at this point. 20 year old adult doing this to a teenager. And I'm not down with it. And it's, here's what gets me. Fun time. They're like, they're all trying to project this. This is gross to me. I feel gross watching this. Yeah, you love it. She doesn't love it. Fun times. Feel me on that, guys. Are you seeing the inhumaneness of this? Are you seeing how, like, 
unbelievable, unbelievably gross this is. Okay, look. Take, open your hand. Good job. Okay. Look. Now she holds her hand because likely she's going to smash it, eat it, throw it, do something. And they are physically, they know what's up. And this is unacceptable, everybody. Not for a video. Okay, if you got to teach your kids something about eating, whatever the case may be, off camera, I get, I, okay, sure. But on a camera, you can see. Look at Priscilla's face. <laughs> see? Look. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> this is disgusting. Look, put it on your face. Yep. Here, I'll help. I'll help. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Doesn't want it. Ooh, girl. Get your pores. Summer. I hope you learn from all this, these videos that people are making, the, the comments that are made about you, the, the drama that surrounds you. You need to get yourself a lawyer or something. You need to call Asa and Priscilla and say, please remove everything with me in it. This is going to be very detrimental to your career. If you get into this as a career and you do something down the line that could be considered not right, there's like 100 videos of you doing stupid shit. And that's dangerous for your career. Not like I care, but maybe you want to know that. <laughs> Does it look like it feels good, Priscilla? Does it look like it? How about I how about I hold your arms down? And as you as you move around, I'm gonna rub shit all over your face. Does that feel good to you? Does that feel good? Summer, you're laughing. Is that cool if I did that to you? If, if Summer's in college, I think she just finished. If, if this ever happened to her in college in this day and age, someone touched her without her consent. Okay, in this day and age, hashtag me too. That guy's going to jail. Okay, that guy for the rest of his life is played. They're doing this will of two people holding one person down to apply shitty products to a kid's face. Girl. <laughs> 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 laughing, laughing. Summer, you should be ashamed of yourself. Okay, she wants to go. What's going to happen? She wants to go. Look, I know that Abby's having fun. She doesn't know what's going on. But they're doing this to sell products. <laughs> okay. Wipe your face. Oh, nice, Ab. Good job. Like yeah. Does it feel good? good? <laughs> it's so refreshing. <laughs> You're a teenager. You gotta wash your face. <laughs> Why does she keep saying your teenager go wash your face? You're a mom. You gotta stop exploiting your kids. Give me a break. I want to point out that she looks to Summer a lot more than she looks to Priscilla. Now, I know that Summer is her best friend. But I feel like she's looking for that. It feels like it's almost she's looking for that. Hey, are we having fun? And she's looking for the facial reaction to, to Summer saying, yeah, we're having fun. She's like, look at me. We're having fun. We're having fun. And Summer is perpetuating. Yeah, we're having fun. We're having fun. Doesn't do this with Priscilla. I noticed that. It's just an observation. Okay. Now we're going to put the skin polish on, okay? Because this is what makes your skin so soft. Ooh, her face is really... No, it doesn't. Don't buy these products. It smells good. I know. It smells... I hate this video. It smells so good. Okay. So you just take a little. <laughs> that seems like a lot. That seems like a lot. Does it feel funny? Here, yeah, you rub it in my. It feels funny. Somebody out there who knows more than me about IDD and autism, when you put something on a person that has like sensory issues, is that a good thing, bad thing? I don't know. Um, she seems to not care so much. I guess we'll just have to, we'll have to let Abby decide. Good job, Ab. Look at all the hearts you're getting, Abigail. Because uh, that's what really matters here. That's so sweet. Nice mm -hmm. job. <laughs> it looks so okay, cute. So yeah, she doesn't like it. Typically, you would leave this on for 15 to 20 minutes. I'm not sure that she's going to let us leave it on that mm -hmm. long. But that's okay. You know, you just... So you're doing a tutorial on how to do this makeup. And so typically do these things, but we're not going to do any of those things because I'm using my daughter here to bring in the views. You know how many views they probably got on this video and it's like still on their page? Tons, because she's in it. 
and this is crazy. She's selling products, forcing her daughter to sit in a chair while Summer holds her down, puts her arm around her neck, and applies products to her to sell products. Just go with it. Abby, can you say hi? Say hi. Up here. Force her to say hi. Yeah, and that's good. Summer, you're you're trained for this. You're trained. You're literally educated in this field, and you're. This is what you do. Hi. So. Oh, look, all skin types, bloody nose, and she's like, ah, crap. Let's. She goes for the delicate skin. Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay. Girl. And this is still on. <laughs> One of the things that I think I've seen a lot of people get pissed about is my video where I talked about where she's like, we're coming in hot, where she dropped her daughter off, face full of blood, to school and said, I'm coming in hot, grab her and go. And then she left and let them deal with it. People, of all the things that pissed me off about Priscilla and a lot of you, that's the one thing that people got like, mm-mm, you pull over, you let your daughter get dropped off with a little bit of dignity at school. It's not about, like, it's laziness, yes, but it's also like, hey, I'm going to present my child to you, not with a face full of blood because I have a meeting to get to. That meeting can wait, that's your child. This video didn't have to be done, that's your child. Shut it off. I would love to see the comments in this video when it was going live. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go on that note, cause she has a bloody nose. <laughs> Abby, first girl ever to get a bloody nose while doing a skincare routine. <laughs> Hashtag real life and autism life here. Oh my God, that's disgusting. Um, Hashtag autism life, are you kidding me? Hashtag shitty MLM mom, that's what that is. Aw, she's so sweet. Boss mommy. Eh? So if you guys have any questions, just message me um, in my inbox. That was disgusting. Does Lime Life not watch these and say, uh, maybe not? Like, who cares? Lime Life doesn't give a shit. They just get the views. They don't give a flying rat's ass. But that's terrible. Okay? Terrible. All right. So, long video. Whatever. You guys asked for it. So, this next video is um, it's called Missing. So, uh, this is a video where Summer moves to New York City to play volleyball at Hunter College and I guess study, <laughs> I guess volleyball. <laughs> American schools are like, what are you going to school for? Volleyball. Oh, I mean, like, what are you studying? Canada, it's like, what are you going to school for? Oh, I'm majoring in this and that. Oh, you're not playing sports? No, because we're Canadian. We take our education seriously. That crazy that you go to school for your sports instead of what you go to school for. Anyway, I digress. So we're going to dig through this. Um, I've gotten some notes with me. I have not seen these videos, which is why I love doing this. And do this because I want to react to it like you're reacting to it. So she's going to school at the 116 mark. Let's take a look. I don't say that she's Abby's best friend because it's cute or whatever. Like right. it's it's the only person that Abby's really connected with on a friend level. Right. And that's you know, like when Summer co comes to visit and she walks in the door, the door for the first time, Abby's all excited. Just, you know, like, like. Ace is the guy that is like a salesman, right? He sells the same story and the same little bullshit to everybody he comes across. And he's like, oh yeah, she's the friend and all this. Oh, now she works for us. Yeah, so whatever. I mean, she's not that way with anybody else. So it's been, you know, she's. She's projecting something here and I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. That's one thing I can't figure out. Genuinely a friend yes. for our daughter, which is, which is unique. Which is very um, unique, right? Because a lot of, right, because yeah. a lot of people would, would, would be cool, you know? Oh, okay, cool. But over the years, you know? Okay, I'm not watching the rest of that shit. So she's leaving, I guess, and they're just having their moments. It cannot be stated enough how much Abby loves Summer. Enough. Abby does not do this with her family. Can we be there for a second? Understand the ramifications of the statement I just made. She does not do this with her family. Best friend, I met her through Surfers for Autism. And ever since then, her and I have had this connection that I was drawn to her, she was drawn to me. And over the years, we've just grown really close with the family and everybody. So I'm her best friend, but kind of like a sister now. Is that good? It was great. <laughs> yeah, good for the camera. <laughs> Hi, Abby. Hi. 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 Hi
Yep. Not related. We just, we met her through Service for Autism and, uh... Been, then we used her for respite. Been hanging out with her ever since. So now it's kind of like having a daughter go off to college, <laughs> which sucks. Yeah. But it's awesome because... Don't miss this, guys. Don't miss this. Because Abby will never go off to college. So he's having a moment here where he's like, it's like having a daughter that goes off to college. What about the daughter that makes you guys rich? I want one day for Ace and Priscilla to just step up and say, Abigail makes us rich. Thank you, Abigail. One day. He's crying because he's going to lose his respite. Because I probably won't get to experience it otherwise. So You son of a bitch. You're crying. You're feeling sorry for yourself. You just said because you won't be able to, oh my god, I can't even, I can't even express to you how upset I am right now with what he just said. Let's rewind a little bit. I want you to see, when you see the full impact of what he just said. Because I probably won't get to experience it otherwise. So, that's my to be honest. There you go. <laughs> yeah, maybe you shouldn't have said the quiet part out loud. What you just said, you can't take that back. That's the overflow from your heart. That daughter that you're basically speaking ill of right now, being have an honest, open moment about right now, is the only reason you're wearing those stupid, ugly sunglasses and that shitty hat and that dumb t-shirt. It's the only reason you have a brand new truck. It's the only reason you're literally buying a house for your son where he goes to college. It's the only reason you live in a nice house and have multiple vehicles and have many expensive things and travel all over the country during COVID. It's the only reason you get to enjoy the life you get to enjoy by hiring people to take care of your daughter. You should be way more thankful just because maybe one day she doesn't get to go off to college. That's why you're sad. You gotta be kidding me right now. Some are like, oh, you're right. I'm better. Oh my God. You guys feel this with me. How are people so tone deaf when it comes to the message they put across? Asa just proved right there. This shit is about him. <laughs> so thanks for that. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> It's not what I came over for. <laughs> Are you feeling sad? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so look, should I, should I put the camera in your face? How many times have they exploited Abigail for these sad moments? Can you let her have a moment without the camera and putting it on the internet for everybody to watch? Can you just let her have one? Let her have one moment. Summer, you're lucky because you definitely have these people. Like, I mean, hopefully you have a family that loves you too, but you've become part of this family and that's, that's great. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like being who you are and in a, in a, in a place that where you are, and it's not, isn't your fault. This isn't a projection of your fault. But you've definitely taken away. And again, not your fault. I don't I have to keep saying that. Taken away some of the love and attention and just closeness that could have been had otherwise because you became you became by proxy the daughter that Priscilla wanted and it's not your fault it's not your fault but I just want to say that that's really heartbreaking to me for Abby because apparently no one else wants to speak up for Abby and what what is what has gone on in her life not to say you can't have human moments but look at the emotion here when you go off to one of your slime life you know, visits during COVID with all your girls and the beach and stuff like that. Is Do you get this sad when you leave? Does Abigail get this sad when you leave? You're gonna do awesome. Where are her, why are Summer's parents not seeing her off? So I wanna just point to something. Now that was her dad that Asa was speaking by with the pool, but it was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't seem like um, anything. Uh, I, as a dad myself, it makes me wonder I don't know. I feel like there's an exploitation going on here of Summer for being her friend and then, hey, you're a friend. You seem to be a person that she really loves. Why don't you come work and then let us not be a parent while you parent? So I don't know. I don't really want to say much more about the fact that they're sending her off to college and her dad, yeah, is there, but it feels like they're t claiming her as their daughter and they're like, we're sending you off to college. We're so sad for you. And it's like, it's not your kid, lady. Not your kid. Yeah, get that camera, roll that camera, get that shit. Don't let everybody have a moment. It's, a, it's like a gum commercial. We're gonna see you soon. And we're gonna FaceTime all the time, 
Don't say no. Okay, because... She said no. Take the no. <laughs> Love you. Okay? Yeah. I don't like that. Do big things while you're in school and if I don't see you, okay? Who's that person? Whatever, I don't care. I'll text you something sentimental later. You weren't going to tell her about the friends thing that you were talking to me about? The friends thing. I won't put that on YouTube. Okay, that's fine. I was just asking. Yeah. See, uh, this would have been a good segue into back in the day, but Isaiah's like, I don't want that on YouTube. He's like, oh, I was just asking. And then his dad put out the information. Isaiah's like, his dad doesn't have any many close friendships. Here's why I don't have many close friendships, Asa. You ready for this? Because you're about yourself. You literally use your daughter for expectation. Nobody wants to be friends with you because they don't like what you're doing. It's very rare you find a guy that's like this. That's why he doesn't have any friends. But he wanted to put that on YouTube. He was waiting, he was itching if he had the camera. Tell me the thing. Tell me the thing you're telling me about. He's like, I don't want that on YouTube. Gross. Gross, Asa. Gross. It's okay. Don't enjoy crying <laughs> at all. But put it on camera. You guys often ask what Abby does when we leave her to her own devices, when we leave her alone. What? So why do you watch her? Your parents! <laughs> What did you do to my office? Mm. She made it better, apparently. Mm. What? Mm. A bath? Mm. You had a bath mm. a little while ago. Mm. Abby, look what you did. Look. We get it, dude. She made a mess. Why are you filming it? Like, why do you... This is... This is when people say, look, you know, we don't... They don't show you so much. They don't do anything. Like, let her, okay, she's being normal behavior for a child, okay? Like, chill. Why do you have to record it and be like, look what you did, film, look what you did, look what you did, look what you did. What do you want? You want a bath? No, no, look what you did, look. Guys, you don't see a problem with this. I have a problem with this. Look. Yeah, we get it. We saw it, dude. We saw it. It's on camera. It's all that stuff. Turn the camera off and do this. Turn the camera off and do this. No, it's not okay. You gotta pick it up. You're gonna help pick it up. It's just, that camera became a weapon. That camera became a barrier. The camera became everything. And like people who watch this don't come in and be like, can you just not put that stuff in? Yeah, we don't need that. How does that help you father autism? Mm -hmm. Maybe some of this is acting out because she doesn't like what you guys are doing. No one ever talks about that. You guys, I feel like, sorry, but this one has gotta be all about summer. There's so much here, Mary. That we're just going to cover summer, but I mean, and the fact that when we reveal the videos that she's in, it actually uncovers a lot more things. So yeah, it's about summer, but it's also about how they interact with summer and how it it's basically uncovering how they treat her anyway. And summer's like, next episode, it's going to be about Isaiah. Sorry, guys, but this is way too long. So, okay. So this one's called, I don't know yet, Summertime. Get it? Her name's Summer. There's a video of Summer in it in psychology so that's happening and i'm going to be back in new york city playing my last year of volleyball so that's exciting it we tried really to exciting. talk her into <laughs> staying here i'm not even gonna lie yeah, like you did. hardcore <laughs> like you should just stay right so basically this video is just q a summer he said he just admitted something we tried to talk her to stay here what possible benefit could have been for her to not finish school to come stay with you and why would you actually ever put that on somebody yeah, let's be real. Not cool. We can find some. I tried to find something that was more, had more of a draw than volleyball. Right. I've been playing volleyball since sixth grade, though. I can't. This is actually quite revealing to me because I feel like Asa and Priscilla need Summer in their lives because Summer is likely a lot of respite. She takes care of Abby a lot. Abby loves her. And so she responds to her well and probably makes life a lot easier so I can do shitty vlogs and stuff, right? And so this, this projects something really important is that I try to do something, I try to draw her here. Part of me thinks, and this is alleged, my own conjecture, is that the draw was use Abigail for your social media. Grow your social media, use that to make money, become this, and I'm sure there's been conversation with Summer many a time to say, why don't you just use the same platform, grow it, because there's lots of money to be made, there's tons of money to be made, as you've seen. Why don't you just do this? But thank God she finished school, because it's going to need it. You can't just 
Yeah, I understand. Stop. I know. Got one more, I know. One more season. We, and honestly, like deep down, Priscilla and I want you to want you to continue. And oh, that's nice of you. Thanks, non-parents or anybody that didn't really who cares what you think. And finish. Yeah. You know, finish, it's right. it's important to finish what you start. Yeah. Is it? Is it Asa? Like you know that kid that you have out in the world that you want nothing to do with? Did you finish that? Yeah, I know it's a low blow. I don't give a shit. All from from just like friend and and helping out. You know, because it's like everybody is around Abigail helps as a caregiver to 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 some extent right you know it might even just be like a bath by myself oh i didn't even know that yep. I, didn't, I didn't know you gave her a bath tonight, nope. you know? oh that's right you told me she asked you yeah. yeah she was pretty adamant about getting her baths yeah. yeah so i was like sure let's do it like so like those kind of things are new, totally new because it's your camera's dumb i'm not usually here by myself with her we're all hanging out. right sure but it's been a, it's been a smooth transition like mm -hmm. into the caregiver role from from just like friend and and helping out, you know. This is where he talks about, he's told everybody, oh, she's just a friend, just a friend. And it's been a smooth transition from friend to caregiver to, like, push the person we pay. That's gross. It's like everybody that's around Abigail helps as a caregiver to, to, to some extent. Right. You know, it might even just be, like, to block her if she goes to take off and run. <laughs> right. So everybody's involved with that. I, I don't know. Because you guys can't keep up with her. That's scary. No, I, I think everybody in the family has a has a personal connection, you know, with you. I know, you know, as uh, like with Isaiah, you kind of you kind of have that role of like like sister that he made. You know, I, I don't want to say sister he never had, but just. But you just said sister he never had. Everybody, when you find, for lack of a better term, you're st think still thinking the same thing. He's just said the thing he's thinking. He's saying. The normal sister he never had. The one you could do things with that doesn't need to take care of. Gross. That sibling relationship that he doesn't get, that, that's not facilitated by his relationship with Abigail. Right. What? What? Why don't they have a sibling relationship? What? What is he saying here? You guys are understanding that they're talking to her like she's like... She basically is... She, they're talking about uh, Abigail as a utilitarian... From a utilitarian perspective. Right? She serves her purpose of being the person that their whole world is around, right? They are her world. She is their world. But shes it's almost utilitarian instead of, like, human here. That's really weird to me. Psychologically, that's really weird. I hope people picked up on that. Because he is her sibling, but he's also a caregiver. He's a third caregiver, you know, when it's just, when it's just the four of us here. Right, and I'm, like, an older sister kind of thing. I'm not a younger sister. Like, right. Oh, is that Okay, cool. Math. Yeah. I'm watching after him or like yeah. hang out with him as an older sister figure. So th they project this a lot because I don't think they want this to come across like, no, no, it's all appropriate. And it likely is, but just be careful with how much you project something because it likely means that something's happening. So then, you know, and then with Priscilla, of course, you guys have, you guys have, I don't, it, it's not so much like mother daughter. Yeah, it is. Remember this little beauty here remember this little beauty here yeah i don't think it is more like friend yeah but like also again the projection against the thing they don't want you to think that priscilla sees her as the daughter she never had and they've said this multiple times literally they project it and say it motherly figure I sure. feel like like we were at the nail salon yesterday we got our nails done together she's like is that your mom i'm like no, but kind of, but not really. But not, yeah, okay, we get it. No, we, yeah, no, no. Really? <laughs> but you have great parents. Like, it's I not, do. it's, and I think that's what's unique about it in Colby. Like, it's not a replacement thing. Right, it's People like have asked, like, how, what do your parents right, feel? Right. How do they feel about it? Like, well, they're fine. You know, because it's not a replacement thing. It's just, you know, yeah. An added. Okay, boring. Who listens to this podcast? Because it's really boring. I'm going to go back to school and finish volleyball. It's yeah. Great. Really didn't do well with that one. <laughs> this one had to be, I, it had to come up, right? Had to. Had to. Everybody knows this question had to come up. Uh, not usually this direct, but Amy Rogers says, are you and Isaiah going to get married? Smiley face, cringe face. We get so many comments and questions. Are you guys dating? Is that Isaiah's girlfriend? Like, you guys should so get together. People have eyeballs. That's why. And I think that, like... Right now, I'd say no. Like, everybody's like, but... In right now? What? In the future, you never know, <laughs> or whatever. But well, that's not wrong. I mean, that there...
Okay. Right. You never know. Right. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> what? Okay. So maybe this is why people are getting this idea. This is where people are getting this idea from because right here she could have just said no. He's like my brother and she could have friend zoned him into oblivion, right? But she just said, not right now. Really? Really? But you do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's so okay. I and I wish I could like I wish I could put it into words better, like what what we see, you know, because it's he's oh well they're brother and sister. Like they're not. The relationship that they have with each other is super special. Like I, I, I appreciate that my son has that kind of relationship with anybody. So, you know, I, I wouldn't. Here's something you could have done for your son, Asa, is not turn him into a caregiver. Okay, you could have let him have a normal childhood, but because he, we just saw it in the other video, he has no friends. He has no people you can reach out to because you, he's become the part of your vlog, part of your caregiver. He didn't have space to get out there and do the things he wanted to do. Seems like a nice dude. He's probably enjoying college immensely. Hopefully he's doing things he should be doing. But yeah, maybe you could have done that for him. But I'm done with this vlog. I don't even know what I'm doing here. So Summer has made a post on Instagram about taking a big new step, leap forward, she finished school. She's doing, and she's an RBT, which is a registered, which is a registered behavioral technician. Um, it's a paraprofessional who practices under the close ongoing supervision of a BCBA or BCA FLCBA the RBT is primarily responsible for direct implementation of behavior analytic services it's almost like an ABA technician we're not going to get into ABA and all that stuff because it's very divided and that's a very divided topic like that really never has answers because everybody has a pro and con and everybody's different so I'm never going to talk about it but Summer's going to do what she's going to do the reason we talked about Summer today in this length in this detail is because it needs to be said that the exploitation is not just of Abby, but is of, of her, the circumference of Abby. Meaning, and you've heard, I, you heard Asa say it, that Isaiah never got to be a brother, never got the real sister, because he was always a caregiver, right? He was, he was brought up to be a caregiver. His parents weren't so damn lazy, they could have done it themselves, is what I'm saying. Right? Yes, Isaiah is part of the family, and family members do what they got to do, but I feel like he became a full-time caregiver. Right. And they likely use the, well, we got to do YouTube. If we want to have the life we're going to have, they've likely used that as leverage to say, you got to help us. Right. So this is going to be an open letter to you, Summer, from a person who doesn't think that you're actually that in the wrong specifically, but at the same time, we're going to have probably some stuff to answer for as the exploitation of Abby Moss is definitely apparent and is unarguable. Okay. But my advice to you would be to Distance yourself from this family. And I'm not saying that means that don't help. Don't be with Abby and be her friend because she, clearly she loves you. And that's really important to her. But distance yourself from the, from the online part of it. Distance yourself from being a character in their fake life, in their vlog. Distance yourself from being a plot line. Distance yourself from being the reason she's crying and on the camera. You can still be there for her and never, ever be mentioned in this vlog and never be like in the vlog. Maybe, you know, she's here taking care of her, but you don't have to be in it, right? Because in the end, as this family vlogging and the child and the exploitation conversation gets louder and grows larger, you're going to be at the center of this. You're going to be in one of the biggest stories of this because when this becomes a, like, look at where we are in the world right now on Twitter. Okay. Just, just take this for a small example. Uh, I think Teen Vogue's editor made a tweet 10 years ago, racist tweets, okay? Apologized for them, still got the job, and was then now forced to quit, to, to, re to, to resign again because of things she said in the past. Is what she did in the past okay? Absolutely not. Was it at the time okay? Clearly because people were doing it. It wasn't okay, but it was just like, it was a joke. So a lot of people thought. What I'm going to propose here now is what's happening with family vloggers today in 10 years when we look back is going to be a cancelable offense for so many of the people that are doing it today there are going to be so many kids that come out of this on the wrong side of this and there are going to be people looking back on what we're looking at right now and saying what you did was not okay and it's you're going to be ratioed for it later right now we're family vloggers and people are taking uh 
are exploiting kids because there are no rules in place to do this. And it was okay for the last three or four years. Nobody was really saying anything. And this movement is exploding to the point where it's becoming embarrassing to become a family vlogger, where people are waking up, they're opening up their eyes to see this is terrible. The exploitation of children without their consent is terrible. Turning cameras on when people are crying, holding Abigail in place when she shouldn't be doing that, blocking her from going places, putting your arm around her neck while you apply skin cream. Okay, this stuff is going to come back to haunt you. I promise you this. If you want to be in the public sphere, you've got to be able to endure public scrutiny like I'm doing right now to the Moss family. And so my suggestion to you, my open letter to you, Summer, is that you seem like a decent girl. You seem like someone who is not all in it for the money. Does that make sense? I don't think that you're doing this because you think you're going to be famous because of it. I do feel like you have benefited quite a lot from it. And that can be hard to leave that, to forsake that. I get it. But my, my advice to you is to not exit Abby's life, but to exit the public side of the Moss family empire. It's to say... Please take those videos down. I love you guys and I'm going to be here to help, but I want those videos down because this is going to be detrimental to your future. Isaiah, same thing. And so take it or leave it. You're going to likely leave it because I'm a nobody who's just a hater. I'm jealous. You guys have more followers than me and all that stuff. Yeah, cool. But look at it from the perspective. Read the comments. Read the room here, okay? Not leg humpers. Leg humpers, they're dumb, okay? Most people who comment in favor of what's happening to Abigail cannot understand themselves. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, most of them... Do not have the ability to understand. Read the read the room. Read the comments if you dare so. Okay, and read what people are saying when they're waking up to the to the exploitation of Abby Moss. Okay, you are on the wrong side of this. You will be on the wrong side of this. Nothing you're doing to her, except the friendship that you give her, that I do think is genuine, is good. Okay, so that's my open letter to you. Take it or leave it. I don't care. Uh, but I, I mean, I don't you. I don't deserve your attention, I guess. I don't deserve you to listen to me because I feel like you think I'm the enemy of you, and maybe I am. But I'm I'm pro Abby and you're pro Abby. So if on any basis of anything, listen to me because we're both pro Abby here. We're both looking for the best for Abigail. I do believe that. I do believe that. And I do believe that the mosses are too. I really honestly believe that. So somewhere along this journey, you guys lost your your way. Where the money became more important, the clout, the fame, and everything else became more important to the, the, the betterment and the, the safety of Abigail Moss. And so try to find that. Try to get that back. Because she needs you guys. So anybody who, who comes at me here in this comment section and everything else, understand this. I actually do care about Abigail Moss. This is the reason I do this. Because in the end... No one else is going to stand up for her. You guys cannot deny the things that I'm saying. If, even if you hate me, come at me for being jealous or whatever, that they make more money than me or whatever. How do you even know they make more money than me? You guys don't know me. <laughs> but again, okay, I'm just going to say that. Um, come at me. But if you, if, you, if, you, if you love Abigail, like all of you say, you should be literally coming at me and be like, you know what? We love that you love Abigail. And we see the points you make. Maybe concede on some of the points before just coming at me. Maybe I'm wrong about some things, and likely I am, but I'm definitely right about some things too. So why don't you come at me with, a, uh, with, a, with an argument? Why don't you come at me like an adult and, and start understanding first, too, that yeah, maybe I'm wrong in some things, but I'm definitely right about a lot of these things, okay? When it comes to Summer, I think she's just a byproduct of this fame-induced YouTube family vlogging destroyed toxicity culture that just has turned her into something that she likely would never have been if she never met these people. Next week, we're going to dive into Isaiah, or next couple of weeks, I don't know. Again, don't at me. I, I take a lot of time to do this because I think a lot about them. It's really important for me to get this right, guys. I don't want to just come in like I'm bullying. I don't want to be tagged for cyber harassment or whatever the hell they're going to try to do to get me off this platform. I need to cover this properly so that we're being real, okay? You guys can see it with your eyes. Maybe I'm pointing out things that you likely didn't think of, and that's maybe one of the gifts that I have, and I'm glad that I have that. So thank you for coming along for this journey, and for those of you who've woken up to the Ace of Moss and Priscilla Moss, you know, whirlwind of crazy. Those who have woken up have done some incredible digging into themselves to see why they're watching this. It's voyeurism at its finest, and we need to stop it. The end. Isaiah, I challenge you again. 
Okay, a couple things. Boxing match, if you want to do it. You don't even have to lose weight. I'll just, I'll fight you in your weight category. You're super heavyweight. I'll fight you. But we'll do it for charity. Like you talked about Austin Broom and all these guys and why not? If you beat me, I will, I will take every video I've ever done about you down. I will never speak of you on this platform ever again. And all proceeds will go to some awesome autism fundraiser, whatever, some place, but not of your choosing. We'll let the fans choose. That's open. Also, please do me a favor for 30 days. Take Abigail off of this platform. Just take her off. Okay. And I want to just to prove me wrong and just talk about autism from a parenting perspective without using her at all. And so I want, I want you to prove me wrong that they'll still come watch you. You're still going to get the same enge engagement. And if you don't want to do that, why don't you try 75% or 50% less than you do now? And I see you guys trying to make an effort because not for the idea that you think you're wrong, but because you're trying to mitigate a disaster that's coming your way. Look, you're just going to be part of this family vlogger train that's going to be wiped out eventually. YouTube's making new rules. There are, there are literally lawmakers in your country right now making new rules. And it's going to get crazy. And what you're doing to Abigail cannot be argued, everybody. Again, I've never heard a cognizant argument from anybody yet that it's okay what the mosses are doing to Abigail. Never heard one. Never heard one. And it's always the same. I'm jealous, okay? Or I... I don't know anything because I didn't watch enough videos. They only show 10 minutes of their life a day. Uh, no, it's not expectation because she loves it. When I've proven everything wrong, all you have to do is come at me with a proper explanation of why using a child without their informed consent is okay. Nobody yet. All right. Sorry this video was so long. and But there's so much to cover here. It's such an important topic. But in order for my voice to grow louder, everybody... I need to grow my channels and my social media platform, just like Asa and Priscilla do, okay? To a level where you have a big enough voice that when someone, when I actually reach out to someone for comment, they might be like, okay, you know what? Maybe I'll answer this. Maybe, maybe we should double think this. I'm getting actually responses from parents that I'm covering that they're actually starting to rethink how they're doing this. And that is a huge win. Asa, your pride doesn't let you. I get it. Your wallet is more important to you than anything else. I get it. You guys have enjoyed a certain platitude of life up to this point, and you've gotten to an echelon where you can't go back now. Like, what are you going to do? You can start a shop? I get it. But do this. Put your daughter's well-being over your own selfish desires. Just try it. You might end up being a better person. So yeah, like my Instagram. That's how my voice grows, everybody. And uh, take a deep breath. And be with me on this. We do this on this channel. You watch me, you comment, you laugh, you cry, you engage, you react. You do all of these things, I believe, because of the same end game. To bring awareness and attention to children who are being exploited on YouTube without their consent. And a lot, of, and a lot are being exploited way worse than others. And that is why we do this, everybody. No other reason. And it's become a national conversation for a lot of people and it's growing louder and our movement is gaining steam. So you are incredibly valuable to this movement, to this whole thing to help kids. Now take that, put that right in your heart and say, I'm doing an amazing thing by liking, subscribing, by sharing, by talking to your friends about this, by Instagramming it, by buying me a coffee, by buying a shirt, all that stuff helps this, helps my platform grow. And you are valuable. And I'm not here without your input, without you, what you guys do in these chats, without being hurt with me, without being, you know, flabbergasted with me, without being like making the same faces as me, without crying with me, all that stuff. So thank you so much and keep fighting with me. And I will see you tomorrow.